I am Neelam and uh, today I'm going to present on gestational diabetes mellitus and this diagnosis is uh, before or a high blood sugar and uh, developed diabetes when she is pregnant and its prevalence is up to 9.2 percent and it's been increasing due to rise in obes obesity and type 2 diabetes and certain race is at high risk of uh, and gestational diabetes is uh, generally developed during the second trimester when increased level of blood sugar, increased level of certain hormones made in the placenta prevent insulin from regulating the hormones. And as the placenta increases, grow larger, more insulin resistance increases, and it which makes sure that the uh, fetus get an adequate supply of glucose. Insulin resistance is also because of excessive obesity or the uh, long-term uh, intake of excessive nutrient. And uh, 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 women's pancreas produces enough insulin to overcome this insulin resistance, but if it cannot, but if it cannot, the blood sugar level rises and results in gestational diabetes. Blood sugar level will return to normal after delivery uh, for most women. So it is also associated with many adverse outcome for mother and baby. Uh, when mother's blood sugar level is higher, the baby is continuously exposed to this high, high sugar and baby is overfed and grows larger and consequences of large baby results in birth trauma and cesarean delivery and possibly a lifelong um, risk of glucose intolerance and uh, um, obesity and mother also have excessive uh, 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 hypertensive disorder and a risk of developing type 2 later on and nutrition therapy can positively influence uh, the outcome of pregnancy for both mother and uh, fetal health and patient who receives diet therapy can have or uh, can lower the postprandial glucose less perinatal complications uh, can lower the percentage uh, large for gestational age and uh, reduce a rate of medication so the goal of the nutrition therapy is to minimize the glucose excursion and maintain the uh, blood glucose within the target goal before and after the meal ensure the safe and adequate nutrients and provide um, just educate calories not uh, not too much not uh, less just enough to promote the fetal growth and the maternal weight gain without uh, any ketosis so the energy requirement does not increase during the uh, first trimester. So the meal plan should promote good health for both fetus and mother, including weight gain and the glycemic control. Uh, there is no optimal energy intake for the GDM. So the plan should be individualized based on nutrition assessment, dietary reference intake, and it should be culturally uh, because the infant weight is associated with the maternal weight gain and maternal size, uh, so maternal uh, maternal weight gain recommendation uh, should be based on preconception BMI. Despite the woman having a BMI more than 29, uh, she should encourage to gain at least 7 kg. And women who uh, uh, who gain less than 7 kg more likely to present a small a small for gestational age baby and excessive weight gain uh, for a woman who have a BMI less than 26 also puts uh, um, also uh, uh, puts uh, puts uh, puts her baby uh, at a risk of uh, uh, having uh, it puts a baby at, at a risk of developing large for gestational age baby which is also associated with the uh, larger fat mass uh, during childhood Though the weight loss is not recommended during uh, the pregnancy but 30 to 33 percent of calorie restriction um, is uh, recommended for obese women. It's shown to uh, uh, re uh, slower the weight gain and also uh, reduces the hyperglycemia and triglyceride without any ketonuria or 
So carbohydrate is the main nutrient that can affect the postprandial blood glucose level and uh, it should be based on the metabolic profile and the treatment goal. But uh, it should be at least minimum 175 gram for the uh, uh, to provide glucose for the development of fetal brain and also to prevent ketosis and carbohydrate intake can be taken various way it can be manipulated by controlling the total amount of carbohydrate or distribution of carbohydrate over several meals and the snacks or um, uh, or by taking the different kinds of carbohydrates, simple versus carbohydrate uh, uh, complex. So the current research is going on uh, to find out whether restricting the total amount of carbohydrate has better outcome or taking more liberal uh, carbohydrate, liberal complex or low glycemic index. Outcome. So when meta-analysis uh, is done, because most of the studies are on a small group so i've uh, taken this meta analysis of 1170 studies which contains nine rcts as well and more than 884 uh, women at a gestation age of 24 to 30 weeks and uh, they have divided four groups low glycemic index total energy restricted group and low carbohydrate and other group so the uh, uh, patient or who have taken a low glycemic index have uh, uh, they needed a less frequent use of uh, insulin and also lower the birth uh, better birth outcome and their confidence level is 95 percent their p is a uh, 0.039 and a less frequent use of uh, insulin means that 13 out of 100 patients with gestational diabetes will uh, not need to um, use uh, uh, 13 out of 100 patients with GDM um, need to use the uh, use insulin though there are many limitations like different diagnostic criteria outcome was not uniformly standardized inconsistent reporting of weight gain and some of the quality the quality of the it's moderate quality for the meta-analysis of low glycemic index because of certain criteria but it proved with many uh, ran, uh, randomized clinical trial which I don't have time to explain that there is no adverse outcome in consuming that and uh, there are more uh, big studies with more uh, more big studies with the standardized practice is required for so for taking more liberal approach for taking up carbohydrates a high quality carbohydrate for more liberal carbohydrate a high uh, including more liberal carbohydrate uh, 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 can be included by including a high quality carbo uh, fiber which can uh, slow the gastric emptying and hence reduce the postprandial blood glucose level. Additionally, carbohydrate counting could be very helpful in um, in understanding the serving size and spacing out the meal intake. And uh, also, it uh, ensure that uh, uh, that women and uh, women uh, eat at least 175 gram of carbohydrate, uh, not too less, not too excess, to uh, maintain her blood sugar. So protein generally do not have an adverse effect on uh, on on, uh, on fetal or pregnant or the mother health, uh, and its uh, requirement generally increases after second trimester, and it should be based on dietary reference intake, which is 71 gram per day after second trimester. But some of the choices of protein is also high in saturated fat, so uh, uh, choosing a protein which is on a leaner protein would be helpful. And the type of fat uh, 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 choose uh, uh, the type of fat which you choose should be considered because it can affect the maternal weight gain and also lipoprofile pro protein. Uh, and saturated fat is also linked to maternal triglyceride and macrosomia baby. So limiting the saturated fat and taking most of the fat from PUFA and MUFA will be beneficial. And women with GDM should follow all the same guidelines for the nutrient intake for all the. And uh, 
It's been shown that the physical activity can reduce the insulin intake and also help in achieving the weight gain goal. And 30 minutes exercise can be safely encouraged and it also have a protective effect on the risk of yeah. And women who cannot control uh, her blood sugar level through the uh, diet is advised to uh, take pharmacology therapy and insulin is the first choice because it cannot cross the in, uh, placenta. And generally oral agents are insufficient to overcome the insulin resistance and other medications are metformin and glibride and both have uh, certain adverse uh, outcomes associated with it. Metformin is also associated with the reduced, uh, uh, reduced weight in maternal and also uh, less neonatal hypoglycemia but also associated with large children, increased risk of preterm birth. Glyvride is also associated with increased risk of large for gestational infant neonatal hypoglycemia. Um, though metformin is a second line of choice to insulin uh, when provider think that a woman cannot administer the insulin or woman um, refuses to take the insulin. Then blood glucose monitoring is very important because blood sugar level fluctuates based on what uh, uh, what a person eat or how much physical activity a person do. And it's also important to know when to start pharmacology therapy or to adjust the treatment plan of food. And any all women should receive individualized counseling about spacing about the meals and the snacks to reduce the hypoglycemia and uh, prevent the ketosis and maintaining the uh, postprandial glucose level and especially the breakfast meal because uh, her, uh, blood sugar level are generally higher in the morning because of the higher uh, because of the increased level of hormones which can counteract the insulin activity so limiting the carbohydrate choices in the morning uh, could help uh, could help in uh, maintaining the blood sugar level and even including evening snack uh, uh, in uh, evening snack uh, can help preventing the starvation or hypoglycemia especially if women is on hypoglycemic medication and then nutrition education uh, or the education mostly on carbohydrate counting reading labels or monitoring of blood glucose these are all essential part of managing the digestion and then uh, checking the food records, the dietary recall, or blood glucose level, ketone test, fetal growth, weight gain. These are uh, the these all these can help in checking the efficacy of the min, uh, of the uh, diet. So the uh, food plan uh, should meet the need of the pregnancy. They should provide the fulfill the nutrient requirement. Uh, uh, help in the maternal weight gain, promote the fetal growth and without uh, ketosis. And self-monitoring of, monitoring of blood glucose is important to know when to start the pharmacology therapy or to um, maintain the treatment plan. And uh, regular moderate physical activity is required to sensitizing the insulin level, uh, insulin in the body to lower down the requirement for the insulin and pharmacology therapy when the diet when the blood glucose level is higher and cannot be managed with the diet alone and education on carbohydrate counting on uh, on, uh, on reading labels these are all must uh, must for uh, uh, for preventing the complication associated with the GDM and also for uh, positive in uh, pos positive outcome uh, for the maternal and fetal health. So thank you.